What up, everybody? It's Friday, and then I got the car. There, okay. So there's three magazines, which is uh, car audio and electronics, and then there's auto sound and security, and then car stereo review. I think car stereo review was my favorite. So out of the three, and this episode has got head honchos, Rockford and Pioneer, and of course Rockford wins easy. And this is from October 1999. So now it, I try to keep track of these magazines, but if I've done this one before, I am sorry. But you're gonna have to sit through this again. Uh, my girlfriend said I had to choose between her and my car stereo. I'm gonna miss her. No, you're not, because you enjoy the company of prostitutes, and that's okay. Uh, so did Jesus. So, he's being Christ-like. Uh, Opti 2 amps and kilohertz subs are worth giving up your girlfriend for. I don't know about that. Well, you know, if, you, if, she's, if she's your girlfriend for an hour, that's, you know, sure, that's fine. Competition quality that gets noticed. Huh. Digi, Digi Seaver from Blancpain which means uh, blue dot in German. And it's by Bosch Group, who is like the Mitsubishi of Germany, where they make everything. Like Siemens, they're, they're another one of those. So like, uh, is it Hyundai in Korea? They make everything from you know cars to ships to light bulbs. But uh, Macintosh. Car audio. Weak ass subs, I'll tell you that. That looks like the ADS tweeter. <laughs> Rip off. Here's your department. Sorry about the glare, but it is tough. It's already nine o'clock. It's, it's tough to get time to do this for you guys. Time passages. Who is that? Uh, let's see. Mike? I don't know. It's not really tell me who that guy is. Maybe it's Editor-in-Chief Mike Mettler. There's the guy. I never really go... Tom Newsane. Yeah. It's all the important people. Let me know when you call that number. Let me know what that number gives you now. Thank you for calling. Hot. Center center pen technology. That that was funny. I remember this one too. So first of all, it was like it used shitty compression fittings, which are terrible for audio. And then it had a center pin to like make more surface area contact. Again, it's just a gimmick. It's super dumb. And then this one, even if I remember right, you could put it like an Allen key in it so you could have a little leverage instead of a wrench because a lot of guys, they would make these, of course, in China and they were metric and most idiots here don't have metric tools, even though you should because it's, it's the measurement of the future. Join the caravan? I don't know. JBL, these were actually really good amps. I like those. Uh, Class D, and I think they were, um, well, at least the ones I was looking at. Um, I think they were, I want to say 1 ohm or 1.5 ohm stable, something like that. Which is really just 2 ohm. Do, 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 variable base boost, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what I liked about it, though, is that they used a, a cast heat sink. So, not that it's that much better at getting rid of heat, but it just, I don't know. So, usually it, it, it indicates that the company or brand that is selling that took the time to you know do that, but they could use an off the shelf board um, and then just build, build a heat sink around it, which is actually pretty common for a lot of guys. You know, I think, what was I looking at? Uh, oh, I was on Facebook and they were talking about this Clarion amp that was uh, rated for a thousand Watts. And I said, yeah, that's a class GH amp. And I remember Bernie Bulland showing me, you know, what class GH is. And it's, it was really interesting. That's all. Um, and um, the problem with GH, though, is that uh, it's proprietary, meaning it's there's a patent and you have to pay a royalty when you get amps made. 
And, uh, but the, the, the Clarion board also shared, it was the same board, but it was a different heat sink used on Servo Vega. And uh, like I had, I had known this, but I didn't know who was behind it. And of course that's Larry F at Cicada that was in charge of both brands. He, so he was, that was his choice. So, cause uh, he's like, do you want this? We're doing these. <laughs> well, what's funny is a lot of the stuff gets made where they, they say to not Sony, Sony is so big that they, they, they call their own shots, but uh, to these smaller brands, they go, Hey, look, we're already doing whatever, 2000 pieces of this. Do you want to get in on this buy? And it helps make a, a better profit, especially for somebody like Larry that's doing the coordination and the in-between. And that's how a lot of products come to market. So, or I should say fruition, because, you know, a lot of guys, especially when they're like, they approach me about ideas for uh, a subwoofer, you know, they, they want the thing to, you know, they want it to be this shallow and then they want it to play to 20 Hertz and they want it to handle 10,000 Watts and they want it to cost a dollar. So shipped. And that just doesn't exist. Two, 200 watts maximum. So that is tiny. That's basically a home audio sub, which is great for home audio because you don't really need to get that loud and the cabinets can be much, much bigger. So it ends up making the, uh, the, the, the system, the subwoofer system, much more sensitive. So Skosh, nobody cares about Skosh. Got kicked out of Walmart. Now it's Metra, which is, of course, Larry because Larry supplies Metra. Uh, see, Sermon Vega. See, there's the, the gimmick too. Two smaller fuses instead of one, because this fuse holder is good up to 30 amps. Uh, but they instead they chose to use two to make it seem like it was better. Uh, there was actually um, a period of time where Lanzar, which was bought by several years ago, bought by the Pyramid Group, and uh, they actually had two fuses, but they were wired in series. <laughs> Which means it was it was two thirty amp fuses wired in series, which means it's only fused for thirty amps. But it was this big heat sink, and it, you know, you're like, this doesn't sound like a thousand watts, or this doesn't sound like two thousand watts, because it's a fucking four hundred watt amp. So that's why. Jensen three channel. Somebody else trying to do the three channel thing. Uh, but you know what's funny is nobody uses fader, but everybody seems to want it. I'm like, no, I don't. I would use like a two like a two channel amp for like well for years I used a four channel amp for everything. You use two channels for highs, and then you use two channels bridged for sub, and it sounds fucking great. There you go. We were talking about this today. Ron, my mechanic, came in. <clears throat> He's not even a mechanic. He owns the he owns Ron's tires over there on uh, Guadalupe and the the one one, and uh, he's like, do you have like a basic? Bluetooth head unit that I can just throw in a piece of shit car. And I was like, yeah. And then when he gets here, he's like, do you have something with a CD player? And I laughed at him because I was like, who would use a CD player once you can get on Spotify and go, Spotify, play Tay Tay, you know, play, play Taylor Swift's new re-recorded albums, which is a genius thing, by the way. And I'm so glad she did that because uh, she got, she got fucked, man. She got fucked in the butthole by a bunch of shitty guys or shitty people. And uh, she stood up for herself and she put in the extra work and I'm sure she paid for the production and production for six albums like that was probably well over a million dollars, maybe close to two million. And uh, and then like I think it paid off like in six months with the streaming revenue. So which that would be a great thing for even a loan where you don't want to sell any of your assets. And so you go, you go to a bank or a banker and you say, hey, I want to borrow two million dollars so I can re-record my albums. And then you let the residuals pay off the the loan amount, you know, plus some interest, well, not well, plus principal or whatever. And uh, that way, you're not out any money of your own, and it, it pays for itself. It's fucking great. That's that's a great return on investment because you didn't have to sell any assets to do it. So, money talk, nerd. He looks like the dude in the Matrix, one of the agents. Who is this? This is Doug Newcomb. And this is a, what is that? I don't even know what kind of fucking car that is. He's in the Iesca X Expert six, 601 watts and higher. He's an air traffic controller from Humble, Texas. 
Uh, his name is John Pitts. Double T. Oh, it's a Thunderbird. I don't know. Maybe it's some sort of conversion or something like that. He's got the Rockford. Is it the 8140? Doesn't say. Let's see. I like the 80. The 8140 was the, the Shiznit. That was the ultra, had, you know, balanced output, uh, unbalanced output, and which, you know, doesn't matter, but that was the one to have. I got some other stuff. Got home tweeters in there. Fancy, fancy focal. And then Fosgate subwoofers. What? Three 15 inch Rockfords in IB, I'm sure. Yep, look at that. Look at those big fuckers. Looks like a Fiesta in there. 1999 Chrome Woofers. Look at that, Chrome Amps. Yeah, back in 97 when Stupid Rockford came out. That was the only time, or that was the first time that Rockford had gone to uh, a focus group. And in, uh, you know, 1996, and they said, they asked these young guys, they're like... Um, that's a cool touch, a white one. They said, what do you like? And they're like, we like chrome and gold, right? And so then they, or they said silver and gold, which is, you know, every kid is going to, young child is going to say that. So did Rockford come out with chrome and gold? No, they came out with this weird silver and then these ugly, uh, was it ugly gold painted, I'm sure it was powder coat, but it was ugly as shit. I mean, those are, those are what's known as the McDonald's uh amps and they only came out for 1997 and it was like a, just like when you look at the what they did in 1995 and then 96 with the x2s oh my god they were on fire they should have just kept making the x2 for like another two or even three years nope got to change it every year and um uh, i think that was what was it 90 I think it was 97 or 98 when they introduced Mesa as well with the new heat sink. But, yep, there you go. See? Even in the picture, they got the ugly gold end plates. So, but it was a miserable flop. They were like, oops. Maybe we interpreted the results of the um, focus group wrong. And somebody should lose their job. Because I think right around that same time, that's when Audiobon came out. With their fucking chrome and flame amps, and they just sold like hotcakes, man. And those were just big turds. They just heaters, big class AB, high current bullshit. And uh, they cleaned up. So, but it wasn't enough for Nasser. He wanted to import meth methamphetamines on top of that. So, oops. Sorry, sis. So, pump this. I love that remote control, though, on this series. So that was the the newest one at that time. And then I think, yeah, I think it was this series. I'm trying to think. And then I like the Silver Series. The Silver Series, I think, is the one that had the uh, the Apple uh, wheel, where uh, Execute was pushing the wheel, and then uh, you had the flip. I forget what that's called. But that was really intuitive. I like that gold a lot. That's how many girls he's had sex with. Some, what is it? Tasted? Tolsted? Tails? Tails? I don't know. Iowa. 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 Boston. MTX. MTX was always so funny because it was like, it was like the nerds, you know, audio. Um, they, I thought they were always overpriced. And... Um, you know, like they, they, they wanted to get into that corporate money, you know, where like the Navy buys, you know, they're like, we need to buy 10,000 speakers so that we can play elevator music on battleships. And they're like, we got gotcha. you. And then they would get into that money, which is good money, which is really, really good money. You, in fact, um, when I was dumpster diving at Diamond Audio, um, when Ricky Farr was in charge, um, they, they actually spun off the TDX brand uh, to be for home audio. And I remember they got the Gateway um, contract for Gateway computers. Dude, that was free money. Oh, my God. 
It was like a million dollars, like easy peasy money. And, you know, they just, they used off the shelf bullshit and then they paid for molding and tooling and stuff for the final package. And of course it looked nothing like the way that Diamond Audio represented in, in uh, car audio, but they had the, they had the contract. So good for them. But yeah, those OEM contracts um, are really good money makers. Typically, the ones that I've heard about, like the one that Rockford did with um, the head units and Delco, the first series, the first uh, generation of those, uh, they broke even. So, but they had actually uh, built some amps for um, the. It was called Odyssey, and it was for Corvette and Cadillac and those brands. And then they, they could offer it also. But um, the problem was there wasn't enough margin on the stuff, and so. And I think it was, um, of course, the deal was in uh, GM's favor or Delco's favor, I should say. Renaissance. Uh, is it Renaissance? No, I think Renaissance got spun off on its own brand. This was the brother rivalry that I was telling you about um, at Morel. Uh, they were made in, um, uh, is it, is it, was it Resident? I can't remember now. Um, but they were uh, maize, Israeli made and then... Um, one of the brothers did an exact copy, but he copied it in China. And, uh, you know, which goes to show you that it doesn't have to be made in Israel or America or anything like that in order to be good. You just have to have certain standards. And typically you want to have, uh, you know, a vendor and then a backup vendor that makes the exact same product with like a tiny little mark so that you can know the difference of which one's defective because you always, you want to, dude, you got to do stuff in secret. It's all this stuff about sourcing from China. You got to, uh, like, well, I, we were, I was uh, unloading a container today at Recoil and uh, Larry had asked me some sort of question and I was like, well, that, I said, you got to out China, China. So, <laughs> and it sounds ridiculous, but you, you really do have to kind of Full China because they work as a team, you know, even if they hate each other, they still work as a team to get more money out of you, out of you rich, chubby Americans. Lazy. You guys are lazy. According to them. So I know you're not lazy. You're just sitting at work watching this fucking video on the boss's time, jackass. When you should be working or at least masturbating in the in the bathroom. Like a gentleman. I really like their head units too. The, they had, uh, I don't know, I think some of them actually had built in DSP, which was great. Um, but I think they had uh, electronic three-way crossover, which was really cool. Some of the higher end ones. But they, they were so, so expensive. It was like, fuck. Fuck me. So, MA Audio going the, going the visceral route. I think you can see some vagina there. Definitely some, some shaved fur burger. Going on there. Of course, that's always somebody's girlfriend associated with. It. I like it the background for Arizona up in Four Corners area. But yeah, MA Audio was like the other version of Power Acoustic. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, that was uh, Nasser's, I think, cousin or uh, nephew. Um, I forgot his name, but I, 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 we bought a bunch of stuff, pallets of dead woofers from him and I helped him on a project to do um, the, what was it? It was basically like what, what stuff that I came out with later, which was the modular. Uh, did I already? Sh oh, they're different. Okay, whatever. Sorry. I was like, I thought I'd seen this page before. So I really wanted to get to this. So 1979 power plate. The product that started it all. And then the PQ-10 which I think these were made in Hapan. And then the P840, which was at ADST there in Tempe. And then the PX, which was the ultimate eight channel awesomeness. So, and I'm sure they figured out a way to um, fuck all of their vendors out of the money that they owed them. They came in these wood crates. In fact, I got about 10 wood crates at the auction. And I actually sold off each wood crate for about a hundred bucks. It's fucking great. The world's most potent basic machine. I don't know about that. 
That seems like a pretty steep claim. Uh, Nakamichi! Which was basically another version of Eclipse, all the stuff that Eclipse came out. So, Which I think was also a Japanese at the time. Yep, Tokyo. And then right there, the RFX 8230. I used to obsess about this shit. Oh my God, it was so crazy. I knew all the specifications. I knew which model did this, and which model was the upgrade, and which, you know, like, oh, golly. Which is a terrible waste of a brain to memorize all kinds of dumb shit that doesn't matter. But it took me some years to figure out that it's a bunch of dumb shit and it doesn't matter. So that none of these specs really matter. Um, it's it's going to be good enough. So, oh yeah, and then I remember this one. Was it Sound? No, it wasn't Sound City. Uh, right around 1995, there was these um, little flyers. They would do an ad in the back and they would say, send $10 for a wholesale list. And it would send you a list of vendors all over the country that you could buy, you know, uh, wholesale priced equipment from, which was a lie. It was a lie. It was a bunch of brands you hated already and you were like this is a lie but they got you ten dollars so it's like um when they there was this old ad where they would sell you a uh, portrait of abraham lincoln you're like this beautiful portrait um that of abraham lincoln the blah 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 president he did this and that and it was commissioned by the u.s government blah 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 and how it was official and then so you'd pay like i think it was five dollars and then they would send you a penny. Ha 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 ha! Burn! Burn! Nobody cares about security. Keyless cop. DB Drag Racing. Kentucky Fair and Expo Center in Louisville. My dad used to drink there at the third base. Third base bar. Where I dance with a hussy. When I was supposed to be helping him, he's like, go ahead, dance with that girl. And she's a hussy. I was like, all right, I like hussies. My dad liked hussies too. So what do you know? Again, cast frame or cast uh, sink, typically better. But again, now I know better. It's all, it's all bullshit. Uh, oh, there, yeah, oh, there it is. Oh, God, are you kidding me? So that album, oh my God, changed my life. That was fucking insane. That is Surrender by Chemical Brothers. And um, dude, that that changed everything. That fucking album. And it was funny because I think, what did I see? It was, uh, yeah, Let Forever Be with Noel Gallagher in it, which is a purposeful knockoff of a Beatles song. I forget, off of Revolver, if I remember right, but... Great album. I love that one. So, uh, but again, they don't do the review. <sighs> How do I say this? It's rigged. There's something rigged about it. Don't, don't trust these fucking magazines. These are like beauty magazines for men. It's all full of, see, they do the Ramones because they go, everybody loves the Ramones. And it's like four versions of Howard Stern. Or actually, this Joey really just looks like Howard Stern. So, but Howard knows that. He's really self conscious about that. So and neurotic, and I love him. So, rock and roll, Cannon Father. I think it's a play on words of Cannon Fodder. It's terrible. Received the Cannonball, blah, 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 blah. Cannonball Classic, from CCR to Tchaikovsky, whatever. And then I don't know what Sony was going for here, just to show how crazy you are with your base things, and you know Walmart and Pet Boys and. Check your auto parts where you can buy those things. And then Phoenix Gold showing. You know, I don't, I don't, I didn't see one ad for JL Audio. Good. I saw one for Macintosh. I don't remember seeing one for JL. Good. Fuck you, JL. Still pissed off at you. Oh, no. I lied. There we go. There's the W3 showing how awesome it is when it wasn't. With VRC technology. And they made it in a dual six ohm so that you could buy three of them and wire it down to four ohms or whatever. So you wire it 
three 12 ohm loads into three was well, just it's so stupid uh they probably just got a special on those coils which were probably meant for home audio anyway because in home audio typically a, a dual eight is a has a dcr uh, as low as like five ohms so ready uh believe it or not the video that i just did for um the jbl pa speaker um the dcr on it was like 5.4 I was like, what? And then I, even now that I think about it, it was actually lower than that because my meter is off by, I think, 0.3 ohms. So it was like right at 5 ohms. And and then they called it 8 ohms. So they're accounting for rise. Like, no, they're not. Then what they really want to do is just push your amp and so the new products um, are louder. And you go, oh, this one's louder than the old one. Well, because they used a 4-ohm coil, basically, and they're fucking up your amps. And then you go, this one... This this new setup makes my uh, amps overheat, and then and then of course the guy at Guitar Center is like, "Well, you need bigger amps, bro." Duh. So and then you need one that's two ohm stable, and none of them are ever really two ohm stable. They're like two ohm stable for like ten minutes until they overheat. So, but anyways, that's the Car Stereo review for nineteen ninety nine October. I love you guys. I'll do more of these videos. I know you love them, and I love you. Bye.